Good morning, you three-time amputee ape. I started this video yesterday of, like, am I happy, like, reading this book. And... Number one, fake it till you make it. All right? So, I started thinking about all the things... Well, first of all, I guess I owe you an apology. Good morning, you three-time amputee ape. I, I think I owe you an apology, right, on a positive note. Because this, this pod vlog has been, has been down, hasn't it? Woo! It's been just, I, I mean, looking back at it, just where is the fun? Where's the fun in my life? Where's the fun that I get to share with you? It's all so serious. And that is no bueno. So, this all stemmed from yesterday uh, and the day before reading this book called The Inner Work. Right? Now, I always thought therapy was for wussies. I'm not going to lie about that. But then I realized that actually... Therapy is just about finding a way to understand the th chemical balances in your life. No, I'm not talking about at the cellular level. I'm talking about if you feel emotionally down, why is that? Like, what are the causes of that? What's the reasoning? And then how do you get out of that place of being down into a good place? And I realized as well that Back when I was working, full-time job, I hated what I did. I didn't see any value in it. I didn't see any worth in it. I just felt like I was wasting my time. And I had this, this side goal that I was working on the whole time, which was to make fun videos, make videos whenever I wanted to make a video. And I, I, was, just, I was so looking forward to being able to doing that full-time. And then when it got to a place of doing it full time, the shift was just next level. Are you shaking a lot? I think you are, hold on. Okay, I turned the uh, stabilization on. Yeah, that shift just hit me out of nowhere. And it, I, I shifted from this place of just making fun videos because I could and I wanted to, to this place of, oh God, it has to perform well because that's my income. And at that point, <clears throat> just everything changed. The pressure that I felt, the seriousness to make things do well, the seriousness to stay at a high view count for brand sponsorships, um, to, to build this brand of mine, everything just got so serious. And it went from, I guess, what I would say then is that I hadn't, um, in hindsight, I hadn't gotten myself into a place where things could kind of run on autopilot. So I was loving exactly what I was doing and I was happy with what I was doing. It was always a constant push of how do I make this do well? And that loop has been draining. So there's the phrase, fake it until you make it. Dude next to me, having a little wave and smile. <laughs> uh, okay, before I get onto fake it until you make it, what are your thoughts when you walk past someone and you're like close proximity, like let's say on the pavement or the sidewalk together or walking down a corridor, do you make eye contact and say hi, or just give them the, the white guy smile? The, or do you just head down, ignore, straight ahead, ignore, or like pretend there's something off to your side and ignore? I, I would say 99% of the time do the say hi to them as I'm walking past, but then you get into those awkward situations, like at the hospital at the moment, the corridor is so long pretty much anywhere you go in this hospital, 
and you'll see doctors or nurses or other people that are there with their kids too. And it's like, you see them down there, you know that they see you and you're kind of like, oh, what's, what's that over there? Oh, hey, how you doing? You both know what's going on, but it's like a, a general politeness between the two of you of, we know this is kind of awkward. We're not ready to have a full time conversation and we're too far away from each other to make any comments. So you just kind of like, you both accept that that's the, those are the terms. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. But then other people will be like, nah, dude, like keep to yourself. Like my wife always used to just ignore, just f ignore that there was anyone there and do her own thing. And there's, there's part of me that started to realize actually that's okay. Is it okay? Anyway, okay, let's get, let's get back on track for a second. No, sorry, for humanity, I think it's good just to say hi to that person. Just uh, for as, as, li as few interactions as we have on a daily basis, like for me, the only time I really see people is when I go to the gym in the morning on a normal working day. Or then if I go out to a shop or go out to do a video somewhere, I might see some people. But other than that, like I think about for this pod vlog, when I used to live in, there was a, a period where I didn't get kicked out of the US, but I was about a month shy of getting kicked out of the US because the place I worked at fired me a month before all my visa application stuff was meant to be completed because actually they just, at some point they decided they weren't going to do it. That's a, another story for another time. And when I lived back home, I vlogged every day. I did it for like three or four months. Bloody loved it. It was amazing. Lots of work, but I really enjoyed it. And I was commuting from my parents' house at the time into Bath, the city. And I got, there were loads of cool things to see and loads of cool things to film. And I, I really liked that aspect of doing like mini just audio edits and like getting some cool shots. So I might start trying to incorporate some of those. Like, why don't I just try it as I walk into the hospital now? Weird to do it at a hospital, but let's give it a go, see what we can get. And then just make a tasty, just a, just a ch cheeky little edit, nothing special. Anyway, let's get back to this um, fake it until you make it. I, I like the idea of, of this. I like the idea of this. I also really hate it. And I'll give you examples of each. If someone else is counting on you, you cannot fake it until you make it. So let's say, for example, when I used to do videography work for clients, like, uh, let's say filming a wedding, I was naive at the time to tell someone I can film your wedding for you. I thought I had plenty of experience and it ended up working out quite nicely and I did it for free. They weren't going to have a videographer anyway. So it was, I guess that wasn't really a mistake. It was just kind of like, I'll do this for you. It's just going to be an extra. If it doesn't turn out well, no, no foul, no hard play, <laughs> not even words. Um, but if, if that client is paying you and they really want a wedding video and there's only one shot to get a wedding video, if you tell them you can do it and you don't know that you can actually do it, that's a bad form of fake it until you make it. But a good form of fake it until you make it is like in this case, I want to be happy and I really need to, to start doing things to make me happy and telling myself all the positive things that are happening in life that will make me feel happy. And I can, it seems bad to say, but trick myself into believing that I am happy because there is so much in my life to be happy for. It's just my expectations of where I feel I should be at the moment. I'm not there. And that is what's making me unhappy. But we can't be having that anymore, can we? 
we are a, hopefully only a couple of days of having our son come home with us from the hospital. What could be better than that? You know, you know how you could turn this into a bad way is I plan to take a good two weeks at least off to spend time with Shay, Ruger and the new baby Kovi. But that two weeks, it's been just over two weeks now, has been eaten up by him being in the hospital. A selfish little man, you know? <laughs> has been eaten up with him being at the hospital. And I don't now, I now don't have the luxury of being able to take time to spend it with family. Yes, because I need to make money, but I need to take all of that out of the picture. I need to get my mindset back to a place of, that I was somewhat familiar with so I can build off of that. That's my thought process. So if I can go back to this place where I was really enjoying making videos, the views didn't necessarily matter. Like it was just like really cool to get lots of views. Brand sponsorships didn't really matter because I didn't need the money. And then earnings from the video didn't matter because I didn't need the money. If I can get that, get back to that place and then build off of that, Sorry, it's not if I can get back to that place. It's today is the today is the journey back to that place and building off of it. So I asked myself in the gym this morning, what have I done that was fun recently? What did I do for fun? And there's a part of me that could lie to myself and said, oh, I mean, look at the videos you made. They were fun. No, those were, those were work. And I've been thinking about those as work. So, mindset shift. Think about those videos as fun. Enjoy it. Get to experiment. Get to do whatever I think is right in the moment. So today, <laughs> even if it rains, okay? Uh, over lunch, not lunch... But when Rugi's having a nap, that's the only time that I am not busy with something that has to be done. Like there are other things that are higher priority. Uh, so during that time, I'm just gonna go outside and kick a ball around. I haven't done that in so long and I'm just gonna do it for fun. No expectations of filming. I might actually just film it, have the mic on, and then uh, just kind of see what comes out of my mouth. If there's not much, then I'll, I'll cut it up into pieces. But what if the goal now is just to do something fun each day? Let's do that. Okay. Let's film a nice little edit. Yes? Yes, Oliver. Let's do it. Okay, see you shortly. Let's go! It gets weird to film more from here, so that's it for now. This is the problem, see, when you get so rich and famous, you have to cover your address because just everybody wants to know where you live. Just to be clear, I'm just, it's a precaution. That can stay there. No, it can't. I have just realized that the number to our house is not centered along the driveway. Oh my gosh, this ball is solid. Oh wow, there we go. Oh my goodness. I'm not very good at thinking as I do these things.
So I started doing some positive affirmations each morning. I made an Apple shortcut, so it automatically prompts me with the different affirmations. And then I just give my response. But it feels so stupid saying like positive things to yourself. I am wanted and needed. I have everything I need. I am inspired and inspiring. If you told me to read those when I was like maybe 14, 15, the common response from any person would have been, dude, that's gay as hell. I don't, you know, I'm not going to use it that way now. But to be honest, it does make me cringe. This ball needs to warm up. So this is step one, just to doing something fun each day. Get myself in a new place. So this is like just step one to getting into a better place of just doing something fun. Because normally, any minute that I'm not with Shay or Rugi, I'm working. Like my mind's just going. I love it, I do love it. But it's pressure, you know? So chapter two, compassion for ourselves and others along the journey. We are the only ones in control of how we experience our lives. The first bit that really res resonated with me, so the first part that really resonated with me, we are the only ones in control of the experience of our lives. Which means when anyone else does anything, like you expected a different behavior, and it annoys you that they didn't do it that way, why would you let that control you? It's like having a bully. Why would you give someone else the power to control how you feel? My issue is with people promising things and then just under delivering. And I then question, what did I do wrong to make that happen? Gosh. This might be the worst football I've ever purchased. It's the World Cup Ar Arila Ball. Awful. <clears throat> the next is that the real solutions are within you. I've always had this belief that we control the chemicals that we produce in our body to make us feel a different way. So if we feel sad, we have the ability to control the chemicals that we produce to make ourselves feel happy. Fake it until you make it type stuff. I don't really have any science behind that. I just... I feel like that's an appropriate way to live life, knowing that I'm the only one who's in control, not someone else. But my main goal of today was to go out and do something I enjoyed doing. I used to spend my life outside playing football. Doesn't look like it, does it? I used to spend every waking minute with a ball at my feet. My first good pair of Adidas cleats, like boots. I slept in them the first night. A pair of gunmetal manias with the blades that could cut Drogon in half. My uh, wife and I will have like a TikTok daily status update <laughs> at the end of the day, just like because we spend so much time away from each other at the moment. Oh gosh. What did you say, sorry? I'm all right, thanks, you? Good stuff. Yeah, sorry, it's not like our actual life revolves around TikTok, obviously. But we, um, you know, just stuff we've seen in the day, we'll just have conversation about it. And I was mentioning to her about this girl called Emily Mariko on TikTok. She got tens of millions of followers, but she, from what I understand, she doesn't really, she doesn't talk in her videos, she doesn't uh, do anything with her fans, like, like uh, doesn't reply to comments or anything. And um, she made this tote back, which, she, it's a, from what, I haven't really seen much about it, but you know how the For You page on TikTok works, once you get, you watch one thing, you're stuck and watching all the others. But, oh dear, 
she made a tote bag for 100 and was like selling them for 125 or something and everyone was up in arms about the prices anyway Shay and I were talking about it and I was saying it gets kind of ridiculous for <laughs> to expect your fans and followers to pay that much for a tote bag and she helped me realize something. If people are willing to pay that, why not? No, it doesn't mean that I agree. And like, it doesn't mean that Shay was agreeing that, you know, the, the way she goes about her business is the right way to do it. But it's also, if you're gonna make money, you kind of have to be a bit ruthless. That's not the point I'm making at all. It's more like, if there's a market for it, target that market. But like in this case, you end up alienating the majority of your audience. And it, from, from what it seemed like, from what people were saying, the pricing of this bag was as such that, it's like a big F you to all of her followers. You know? But then I don't know much about the situation. I'm not gonna place too much of my judgment on it because I don't know if like, some people were talking about how much they loved some of her recipes. Does she give away her recipes for free or does she charge for those? I don't know. I think it's just interesting to see the different points of view. And then even today, Speaking with the nurse that's been um, looking after Kovi. What was she saying? She, her family, she's white. Her husband at the time was black and she's got mixed kids. And she was talking about just how they're treated in this world. Long story of how we got into that place. And I just find it really eye-opening. Racism in itself I, I've never really, aside from on social media, I've never seen it, I've never been around it, I've never experienced it. And so to me, I feel like it doesn't really happen. But just some of the stories that she shared with me, I just like, I can't believe this stuff still exists. And it brought me back to this conversation I had with the, the dude that came to do something at my house. He said, and this is amazing, by the way. It's so, such a mature and wise way of looking at it. Someone being racist, someone treating you differently because of your skin color is entirely on them. That's all on them. Nothing you could do could change their opinion. And you don't have to change their opinion. So you just let them be with how they want to see and believe things. And you know that it's not your fault or your problem. And then you just move on with it. And I feel like that is just such an interesting way, such a wise way of looking at things. And that, that's a true, oh my gosh, that's the, that's the play for this video I just watched, isn't it? Sorry, for this video I just made. That, um, if, if everything comes from within, don't give the external factors control over what you are dealing with internally. Damn. Good evening, you filthy Scotch egg. <laughs> How to, okay. <clears throat> Posted, we've done, I think we've done two videos now of this, the inner work series which is kind of like the journey to finding happiness and it's been a it's been a real learning curve in terms of content not just not just how to make that type of video but dealing with what seems like failure sorry what I, sorry I've I've had to get over considering it as failure so if I give you an idea 
So the one from yesterday is about 2,800 views. The one I posted a couple of hours ago is about 1,000 views. Now, um, I think before I started doing this series in particular, I would have I would have deleted them and been like, okay, I'll scrap this series. People aren't interested. Which is when you think about this from a business, you think, okay, yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, you don't want that on your resume. It's like somewhat the equivalent to doing, I don't know, working at a fast food place for a week and then going for a job as a software engineer. Like you may as well just not have it on your resume, right? But that's not what we're going for here. I'm, I think actually like having these failures, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud. I haven't thought about this previously. It's like, Number one, I like the fact that I'm learning to deal with this. I'm, this is kind of mental to think about. I did a magnet fishing video. So I, did, I think I did three or four in that series. And after the second one, I um, let, like the magnet was got stuck to the actual bridge itself. So I had to go back the next day. And I made like a really short vlog of picking it up. And I remember it doing like three or 400,000 views, but the actual magnet fishing video did like 8 million. And I do remember thinking, oh, I should probably take that second video down. It hasn't done over a million. And that just seems nuts, doesn't it? But that was the, I think that was the place that I was in, I was like, every video has to be better than the last. But now I'm starting to coming, I'm starting to come to terms with, it's okay to not hit the jackpot every time. Is that what I feel? I don't know, I feel, I feel at peace, I feel, yeah, I feel at peace with the videos not doing that well. Which is the first time I felt that in a long time. You know what, tomorrow actually, I might kind of do it like a, a 2016 vlog style video. Am I on the right? Yeah, I'll go this way. So like, I don't know what, like, what I'm gonna be doing during the video. I don't know what I'm gonna be saying yet but just have it with like, I don't know, this, as if there's music in the background and then having sections of the video where I'm, it's just music with something that I'm doing. Why not, like, there's, there's literally nothing stopping me from testing out other styles. If a brand comes to me and it's like, you know, we wanna make a video, then I say, okay, cool, let's do it this storytelling style that I know how to do that I know will get good views. But at the moment, let's kind of just try other things. Why not? And I'm finally at peace with that, which is a very nice feeling. And it was fun. I had fun like just kicking a ball around today. No expectation. Well, I guess I kind of did put expectations on myself to make that video, but I still enjoyed it because I there wasn't much of an expectation in terms of this video has to do well, so I have to get everything pitch perfect. But you know, you know what ends a good day? Some Oki, well, it's not called Oki Joe's anymore. Some Joe's, some Joe's barbecue. Oh, get in my belly. <laughs> Yummy, oh mummy. I've also actually been questioning whether or not, excuse me, I should start to put cuts in this video. Like filming the little segment earlier, I haven't been able, I've tried to edit it in two separate occasions. One of which, 
I didn't have the... I always take carry this... Me. Is this it? Yes. This. Just a little SD card reader, so USB-C. Amazing thing. So glad I bought it. Uh, but I didn't have that with me earlier, so I transferred them from the Sony ZV-1 to my phone. And that took, oh my gosh, that took probably an hour to transfer 11 clips. Terrible! So I didn't get a chance to edit it, but I, th I think I'll do that tomorrow morning. I might have a bit of fun playing with that. And it's not going to be anything exceptional. Oh, I mean, you've already seen it. No, you haven't. Yeah, you have. <laughs> but just a little, a little sum sum. I don't even know if I finished my thought earlier on... Yeah, I didn't finish my thought earlier. But filming, like when I used to vlog, I used to do these like nice cinematic sequences. And doing that in Bath, such a cool city to be doing that stuff. But I, I wouldn't know, I, I would like to do that again, but I wouldn't know what to film now unless I go and do something. Just because I, I mean, I, I'm not going to go up to downtown or something every day just to go and get some shots. And Bath is such a picturesque city that it just looks so good anyway. Yeah, and oh, also today, for this video, I didn't script what I said. I just kind of thought about it a little bit and just tried to say what I thought might work. And I think I'm just now I'm learning how to do things when I script it out, I feel like things are much more impactful. They're much more, they're much, they're wordsmithed. Woo! But at the moment, I'm not at that place to be doing it ad lib. The nurse that was in with Kobe today, Shay must have, when she saw her earlier, must have mentioned that I do social media. And as we were talking about it, she asked me, like, do you... Um, do you worry like about income? And I said, yeah, I do actually. Um, I think a lot of that stems from being at like almost since I've, I mean, even in college. So for the past, well, like s eight years, I've had a, uh, no, less than that, six, seven years. I've had a full-time job with monthly income. You know exactly what's coming in. Like in this space, you don't know. You could have you could have one crazy good month, and then you could have three dry months. It seems like you know, and that one month carries you across. But I, I'm just learning to come to terms with that. But we're getting better. think I think all right I'm gonna pick up the Joes so see you tomorrow oh oh no I have been so I have a shock never mind I'll just tell you tomorrow <laughs> night